sure to have met Brian before the Backstreet Boys. Um, How would you have described yourself then? Uh, like I would describe myself now. Um, what should be what? Just what you see is what you get. Um, I'm very, um, very personable. Um, I'm very open. Um, I can be very friendly, um, very emotional. Um, just those are just different qualities. I'm a comedian. I love to make people laugh. Where does that come from? Is that since you're... I think that's from just my family. Yeah. Um, I had an uncle um, who I grew up with all the time, and um, he used to imitate uh, Jim Varney. I don't know if you know, he was Ernest. Oh, know yeah. That guy that did all the Ernest Goes to Camp yes, yes, and all those yes. movies. Um, my, my father actually went to school with that man. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just like something to do, you know, entertain people. So I was always a big ham, singing and um, just doing funny things. And did falling you know, on my face just for Did just you know then you wanted to do it professionally or it was just for fun? It was just fun. fun. It was just something that was um, just part of my life. It just lifted me up and it lifted others up around me. And So if I were to have asked you when you were, let's say, eight years old, Brian, what do you want to be when you're a big boy? What would you have answered me back then? Oh, I probably would have wanted to be like a professional basketball player yeah. or something like that. Is this something that you've purchased with a, a little bit of the money that you've been making? Is this like a little... The money that I'm, I was saving, yeah. I purchased this. This is yeah. B-Rock. Yes. It says B-Rock. Now, where does that come from, the name? The name is um, from actually playing basketball. Ah. Um, in the U.S., it's slang for shooting basketball is shooting the rock. That's what they call it. So we were working with a vocal coach about two and a half years ago, and he likes to play basketball, mm -hmm. too. So we were playing basketball, and he started calling me B-Rock, and it just caught on. The guys just started calling me that. And so it was way before Backstreet Boys? Well, this was in the beginning of the Backstreet Boys. This was because we've been together almost What do you want years. to accomplish now that has nothing to do with music? You, personally. Brian Littell. I want to get married and I want to have a family. What what kind of girl do you like? Someone that can put up with me, I guess. Are you hard to put up with, um, do you think? I'm not that hard to put up with, I don't think. Have um, you been in love before? I've been in love before. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, I think, I thought it was love, you mm -hmm. know, but, I mean, who knows, until you're married and you take your vows and you grow up and you, you know, I mean, who knows what life has in store, but those are just other goals that I have deep down inside because I was brought up as a family man, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a small family, but yet it was a lot of love and a lot of caring, and, and it's just something that I want to pass on, you know. What would you tell your parents, you know, right now on television about letting you take that opportunity to go and get your, your dream and, and go for it? If you had this chance, I'm giving you this chance right now to say something to a family, you said go for it. Um... What would you say to mom and dad? I would say to mom and dad, um, you know, thanks for everything. Um, I wrote in the credits, especially for you guys, you know, thanks for being there beside me, behind me, and there to guide me through all the trials of life and becoming a man. So, um, I'll say it again, but in person on TV, so thank you very much.
avait manqué, correct? Toulouse avait manqué. Do you have a question of why the Backstreet Boys are successful and maybe another band is not and they are equally as talented? Do you think life is fair? How do you explain the success? Um, I, I think the way that we got together, the way that we came together, I think, is, I guess, is just destiny. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I've left it up to. And we all just love music. And I think all, the, all our, of our musical influence together combined in our voices i think we have a very unique sound i think our harmonies together our back our background vocals our our sound is unique um and we just try to be real we we try we don't try to be something that we're not you're the one for me you're my ecstasy you're the one i need you were singing back home, and, and I know that you were sort of disillusioned, and you had a few bands, and mm -hmm. there were some times when you were just sort of questioning yourself. What made you pack your bags and just decide, okay, I'm going to Orlando? Why Orlando? Orlando, Florida would be a good place because I heard it was going to be like the new Hollywood, and uh, because they do a lot of casting there, not necessarily for lead roles, but you can get a start there and get your foot in the door as far as acting and television and music or whatever. And I knew that Disney, Walt Disney World was there, and it was just at the beginning of summer. And I thought it'd be easy to get a job, so me and my best friend took off the next day. We went home, packed all our stuff, quit our job, and left the next morning. So what happened, right? So you get to Disney, you became a tour guide, is that it? I was a tour guide first because all of their singing and acting positions were filled, and they weren't going to have another audition for several months, and I needed a job. Uh -huh. So I got a job as a tour guide. <laughs> And you met up with somebody who told you about these three guys that sang a cappella, and you decided you wanted to meet with them. Well, I, after I'd worked in Orlando for, it was almost a year, uh, well, two years, actually, uh, a friend of mine told me about uh, a group, three guys, and they needed another singer, and they had um, a record company, a local record company behind them, so there would be probably no trouble, you know, getting exposure, and and all this stuff, so I was like, wow, it sounds like right up my alley. We noticed that when we read the thank yous from all the band members of Backstreet Boys, that the first thank you is God, mm -hmm. and yours is also God, mm -hmm. and there's a special dedication to your dad, because mm -hmm. your dad is deceased. He died in 1991. And I get the impression from what I read about that, that that's really affected you. Definitely. Um, I think it made me uh, realize that you can... This life is short, and you got to go for it. Did your father know exactly what your dream was? Did he get to see you do? He got to, uh, right before he passed away, um, it was really cool. I don't know, I guess, you know, things happen for a reason. Uh, my brother came from Dallas. My, mo my brother is a model. My other brother, who was in college at UK, came to Orlando. Mm -hmm. My mother and father, they all came down, and they got to see me. I gave a tour. And they got to see me on the tour, and we all got to have a vacation together, and that was our last vacation together, because when my father got home, he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so... Do you speak I, to him sometimes? Because I know spirituality yeah. and that is very important to you. Yeah. Do you feel he's with you? you feel he knows what you're doing? I definitely think that he's watching. I just wish, you know, that I could talk to him personally sometimes and get some advice and some feedback and see, you know, what he thinks about things. Hey,